So Liana asked, uh, you know, talk about how a lot of business coaches, marketing consultants recommend that, that if you are a one-to-one -one coach, you should just have one offer and become known for it um, so that it's your specialty. Uh, you know, versus having multiple offers. I, I agree that having one strong offer that you do really well, um, that word spreads about you, of course, makes a lot of sense um, because it's really, it, it's, I've written an article, you can Google it, called Why I Like to Be Pigeonholed. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick here. Uh, he's like, why I don't mind being pigeonholed. Oh, I don't mind being pigeonholed. Does Google know? Yes, Google knows me. All right, I hope I get pigeonholed. So this article is essentially talking about that, um, that I, I, I don't mind being labeled as one thing. But here's the question though, well, whether I'm a one-on-one -on -one coach or something else, here's the question. How do I know what I should be labeled as? How do I know what's that one offer? Again, we're back to that, that age old question about niching. Should we journal and figure it out with our brilliant marketing coach, what our niche should be, what our one offer should be that to be get known for they specialize in? I think that is a fool's errand because how many people's opinions are you, are you, are you consulting when you're, it's you and your marketing coach? That's two people's opinions, both of whom are not your ideal clients. I mean, some of, sometimes you are your ideal client, that might be true, but it's, it's more likely that an earlier version of you is your ideal client, not you at your current stage. You've already you know, thought much more or worked much more or integrated much more than your ideal client has. Otherwise, they wouldn't be your ideal client. They'd be your peer. Your marketing coach is also probably not your ideal client. Your business consultant, your marketing coach, you ask them for all these feedback. Oh, please give me feedback on my copy. Do I, should I offer this? Should I offer that? Marketing coach steps in and goes, yes, I think you should offer this or that. It's BS. This is, to my opinion, this is why I'm always very careful not to tell people, my clients, especially your students, oh, yes, that's that. You're going to make money doing that. How the hell do I know? I, if I'm not their ideal client, I'm just steering them in the wrong direction. So I would rather somebody be open um, to their audience and talk to them to find out, because usually what the audience wants is kind of counterintuitive. It's not intuitive to what you would have thought they needed. Because what you think they need is coming from your perspective and you're already more integrated with your knowledge in your area than they are. So you think they need this, but they don't understand that yet. They think, you think they need, you know, you know uh, the letter M and they're still trying to figure out the letter K. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like you're already several steps ahead of them. So that's why I think it's, I think it's wiser for, for marketing and for business models and for your business longevity to be willing to be testing all the time. You know, eventually as you test multiple things and you find out, wow, offer three, people really liked it. I'm, I'm really good at it as well but don't stop testing. Test offer four, test offer five. While you continue providing offer three, it's like you, you, at first you test. 100% of the time, you're just testing at, at first. And then you come to offer three or four or five. Ooh, that one did really well. Ah, now I'm going to focus my attention on offer five. It's doing really well. Even if you focus 80% of my attention on offer five, I still keep 20% time. Uh, testing, offer six, offer seven, offer eight, offer nine, offer 10, offer 11. Ooh, offer 11 is also doing well. So now I might split my time. Okay, 40% of the time offer five, 40% of the time offer 11, and I'm still going to have 20% of the time testing offer 12, offer 13, offer 14. Oh, offer 14 is doing well. You see what I mean? So, you know, and, and eventually the ones that are doing well, meaning the ones that people are happy to give you money, you start to notice, ooh, which ones am I really good at? Oh, I'm really good at offer 11. I thought I was good to offer five, but my goodness, I'm really good to offer 11. So instead of spending 40% of the time offer 11, I'm going to spend 60% of the time marketing offer 11. You see what I mean? So it's kind of like you keep twisting the dials as you keep testing. You go, ooh, this one is good. So I'm going to keep turning the dial a little bit more in that direction while I keep testing. You never stop testing. I haven't stopped testing. And I always surprise myself. I mean, this, this program, this core program, by the way, this was a test. This was only a test. <laughs> and, 
and it's doing pretty well. So I think I'm going to do it again. You know, I was going to, I wasn't going to do it for two more years, but maybe I'll do it in a year later. So I hope this is helpful. And um, yeah, thank you. <laughs>